Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. In this video, we're going to look at the three forms of the quadratic function. And this is targeted for my pre-calculus students, but this would apply to Algebra 2 or Algebra 1 uh, even. Uh, you don't look at it quite the same way um, in Algebra 1 as we're going to look at it. But Algebra 2 and, and pre-calculus, the way we look at quadratics, it's, it's fairly similar. So these three forms, just like we have multiple forms of linear equations, we also have multiple forms of quadratic equations. And each form has... Um, its specific place and where it's best to use and and what kind of information it actually gives us and we are going to be applying this with several examples uh, in the uh, rest of this video so let's look at each form first and then we'll take a look at some examples and I may end up splitting this into two videos we'll we'll just see how it goes so standard form is is the one that you're most used to ax squared plus bx plus c and Within this form, it gives us the vertex, which we are going to call h comma k. When we talk about parabolas, when uh, we're going to our quadratic uh, functions, h comma k signifies the vertex. The x coordinate is considered h, and the y coordinate of the vertex is k. Okay, so when we see h comma k, we're talking about the x and y coordinate of the vertex. Okay, which is either a minimum or a maximum point as you will recall. So the vertex is in this form right here. We have the A uh, right here. We have the B right there and we have the C right there. That's where the stuff's coming from. So the X coordinate is given by negative B over 2A. So we take negative of this value and divide that by two times whatever this value is. And that gives us the X coordinate of the vertex, which we call H. And then we take that value, stuff it back into the function. So we evaluate the function at that x coordinate and whatever the output is whatever the y value is is equal to the y coordinate of the vertex so this notation means f of this thing right here so we're going to do f of the x coordinate of the vertex and that output the y value there uh, will actually give us the y coordinate of the vertex okay so we'll apply that in a minute and it'll make a little more sense okay the roots are given by the quadratic formula or factoring Okay, we can also factor uh, one of these if it will factor. We that's actually faster than using the quadratic formula. Otherwise, we we have to plug in um, the quadratic formula to find the roots if it won't factor. Um, we can always use the quadratic formula, but it's just faster to factor it if it will. Uh, axis of symmetry. Remember, if we have a parabola that opens upward like this, that axis of symmetry is this vertical line that. Um, is basically the halfway point of the parabola. It is symmetrical about that axis of symmetry, hence the name axis of symmetry. Okay, and then the y, and that is, pardon me, that is given by negative b over 2a. So in other words, notice that the vertex x coordinate is also the axis of symmetry, and that makes sense. If your vertex is right there, then your x coordinate uh, there will give you your axis of symmetry. So it's actually a vertical line. Remember, vertical lines have x equals some number as their equation. Well, in this case, it's x equals the x coordinate of the vertex. That's the short form of what the axis of symmetry is. All right, y intercept is going to be at the c value up here. Okay, and think about it. Our y-intercept occurs when x is zero. So if we set this term to zero and we set this term to zero, right? If x is zero, these just cancel out, and we're only left with that c right there. Okay. So that means that our y-intercept is just this value. Simple as that. All right. Um, let's um, look at the vertex form next. So the vertex form is in the form a times x minus h quantity squared plus k where x is a variable obviously the y is a variable a is going to be our steepness factor steepness factor and the k value is of course our uh, y coordinate of our vertex and the h coordinate right here is the our, our h value is the x coordinate of the vertex so that's why they call it vertex form because we have the x coordinate of our vertex here and the y coordinate of our vertex here. So that's where it gets its name. The axis of symmetry is at x equals h. Again, the x coordinate of the vertex will always give you that axis of symmetry. Um, steepness factor here, remember, don't forget that. A lot of students forget that. They just write it x minus h quantity squared plus k, but we must have a steepness factor out here to determine 
um, how whether it's really wide, a really wide parabola, or a really narrow parabola like that. Okay. Uh, next, we have uh, the root form, and that is a times the quantity x minus root 1 times the quantity x minus root 2, where r sub 1 is one root and r sub 2 is the other root. And as the name implies, it gives us the roots, which is the same thing as the x-intercept or the solution, uh, are other names that we use to uh, talk about x-intercepts. So roots means where does it cross the x-axis, okay? So our roots are given to us in this form, which is why it has the name root form, and there would be one x-intercept there and one in x-intercept there. Remember it's opposite of the sign, so if we had say x minus 4, x plus 2, and a 2 out here for example, this 2 is just the steepness factor, but as far as the roots go, it's opposite of this sign. So our root here would be positive 4. It's opposite of this sign, okay? And opposite of this sign, our other root would be negative 2, okay? And we will apply this um, in some examples in a minute. So there, there are the basics of the various forms. And all of this, all of these notes and the examples I'll use in the, in the video here are provided by bluepelicanmath.com. All right, so let's look at some examples next. All right, here we have example one. It says, for the standard form function f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 5, find the vertex, the roots, the axis of symmetry, and the y-intercept. And then we need to sketch a graph of the function and label it completely. So I've gone ahead and, and listed each thing that it's asking us to find. Notice here, um, roots, x-intercepts, zero solutions, those are all synonymous. They mean the same thing. It's just where does it cross the x-axis. So when it asks for roots here, uh, that's what it means. So I've gone ahead and listed all of those. So we have a standard form, x squared plus 6x plus 5. So we're just going to start by finding each one of these. Uh, when they give us a standard form, we need it's usually a good idea to label the a, the b, and the c value here of our standard form parabola. So a equals 1, b is equal to the 6 right here, and c is equal to 5 because we can use those later on as we go through. So uh, if we want to find the vertex of this thing, remember that our vertex is given by, if we look up here at our notes, remember we've got a, a standard form here. So the vertex is given by uh, h comma k. So um, our h value, h is equal to negative b over 2a from our notes. Okay, so we're just going to substitute that in. So that's equal to negative b would be negative 6 over 2 times a, 2 times 1 is just 2, which equals negative 3. Okay, so our um, x coordinate of our vertex is negative 3. And to find our uh, y coordinate, the k value, we just take this negative 3 and plug it back into the function because our notes told us that it was equal to f of negative b over 2a, which in our case is going to be f of this value, f of negative 3. So we're going to evaluate this at negative 3. So that's going to be algebraically equal, equal to negative 3. We're just st subbing in a negative 3 everywhere we have an x, plus 6 times negative 3, plus 5. Okay, so negative 3 times negative 3 is just 9, so it's 9 plus 6 times 3, uh, 6 times negative 3 is minus 18, and then plus 5, so 9 minus 18 is negative 9, plus 5 is going to be a negative 4. Okay, so there is our uh, k value, so our vertex we have found, it's at negative 3, negative 4. Alright, so that part is done. Um, now to find the roots of this thing, we can either try to factor this or plug it into the quadratic formula. This will factor pretty easily. It's just going to factor to uh, x. We want two numbers that multiply to 5 and add to 6, so that's just 5 and 1. So it's x plus 5, x plus 1. And that tells us our roots right here. Our roots are opposite of this, so uh, we have one root at negative 5 opposite of this sign and one root at negative one. So our, our roots are going to be uh, negative five and negative one. 
All right. Um, our axis of symmetry is just x equals the x coordinate of our vertex. So we've already found that. So that's just x equals negative 3. So we've got a vertical line at negative 3. Our y-intercept is simply the c value right here. So our y-intercept is just 5. We could write it 0, 5 also. All right, so we've found everything they asked us to. Now we just need to sketch a graph and label it. Okay, so let's label the vertex. Negative 3, negative 4. So we'll call that uh, right here. Negative 3, negative 4 is our vertex, and they have asked us to label that. So negative 3, negative 4. We know this thing opens up because the x squared term is positive. Our roots were at uh, negative 1 and negative 5. So we can now, add, let's put our y-intercept in there of 5. This may not be perfectly to scale, but our parabola looks something like this right there. So we can start labeling this. So our uh, y-intercept is at 5. So we're going to, I'm just going to label that 5. Our roots we have at negative 5 there. There's a root. Uh, there's another root at negative 1, and then our vertex is right here. And we just need to put in our axis of symmetry, which is going to be this line right here at x equals negative 3. Okay? All right, so that one is completely done. All right, here's example 2. For the vertex form function, f of x equals 3 times the quantity x minus 4, all squared, plus 6. Find the vertex, the roots, axis of symmetry, and y-intercept. Sketch a graph of the function and label completely. So here's everything that we need to find. Because this is in vertex form, remember that our vertex is given by this coordinate right here, opposite sign. So we have minus 4 here, so our vertex is going to be at 4 comma, and then our y-coordinate of our vertex is given to us out here as 6, and it's the same sign, so it's 4, comma, 6 is our vertex. Um, we can see here, we can go ahead and start making a sketch here. So we have a vertex over here at, uh, we'll call it 4, comma, 6 right here. So our vertex is 4, comma, 6 right here. Uh, we know that this thing opens upward right because it's this term right here is positive so we know it's going to open up something like that so we can start that sketch here's our vertex that we had labeled so as far as finding the roots look if it opens up like this there are no real roots this is this is not a situation where we have real roots where it's going to cross the x-axis so as far as uh, roots go we can just go ahead and finish that and say non-real <clears throat> There, there are no real roots. We could also write that no real roots. That would be fine or just non-real. So the axis of symmetry is already done for us. Remember the axis of symmetry is always x equals the x coordinate of our vertex. So it's just x equals 4. Now to find the y-intercept, that's going to be pretty quick. We just substitute, remember our y-intercept, wherever that is, occurs when our x-coordinate is 0. So we just simply sub in a 0 for x here and rewrite this thing. So it's 3 times 0 minus 4 quantity squared plus 6, which becomes 3 times uh, negative 4 squared plus 6. Negative, we need to order of operations here, we need to square this first. So negative 4 uh, times negative 4 is positive 16, so it becomes 3 times 16 plus 6. 3 times 16 is 48, plus 6 more is 54. So our y-intercept occurs at 54, so 0 comma 54. So this thing is not really going to be to scale, but that's way up here at 54. And our parabola looks something like this. This is not to scale because 54 is way up here. Uh, and then we'll draw in our axis of symmetry here at x equals 4. And we are done 
with this. We have identified everything that they asked us to find and we have sketched the graph. We labeled the vertex here at 4 comma 6. We have x equals 4 labeled as our axis of symmetry and we have our y intercept labeled at 54. Alright, let's move on to the next example. Alright, I'll take that back. We're already at 15 minutes so let's call this video done and we'll make a part 2 we'll, where we will work some additional examples. So for my students in pre-calculus the overview and example 1 and 2 will be in this first video and then we'll do the uh, other examples in a second video. Alright, so see you in the next video. I will put the link uh, to the second video in the description of this one.